Good morning. This is Jim Dedman, Sawlogs Plastic Hubs. I always sometimes say machining in the backyard. You can see it's my shop outside here today. And uh, today we have a video for you, something I'm doing. I hope you enjoy it. Pull you up your virtual chair, have a seat, sit down, enjoy the show. Good day. This is Jim, and this is your old buddy Jim. Hey, we we doing a project today, and it's got a little bit of fabricating and a little bit of welding, a little bit of machining in it. Uh, excuse my head being cut off because the project's behind me on the workbench, and I kind of got to bend down. So I'm gonna out quick running my yip in the camera and let you look at it. This right here is the project, and I'll move the camera down just a bit and get you in focus here. This is a umbrella stand for our back deck picnic table, our patio table. We have one of them plastic ones that's outlived its useless. And uh, I went by, and I'm going to give a shout out to local business, uh, Baby Service Center here in Dallas, North Carolina. And needed an inspection on my truck to buy a tag. And <clears throat> while I was there, I asked him, I said, you got any more brake rotors? The scrap metal price isn't that good, so they they don't get that much for them. And I have to have a bunch to get some money. So they'll usually give them to you. So the good boys at Vadies did. I woke, told me go across the street to the big shop. I walk by and pick these nice big, I got two of these rotors. You've probably seen them in a slot, or you will. And uh, I got another project in mind for the other ones. But this one right here is going to be my patio holder. So come along with the video and enjoy us putting something to do us making this up. So you know, let's enjoy the video. All right, here we go. What I've got is a piece of plate steel. We're going to make a plug to go in a... To go inside of the rotor and then we're going to put a piece of pipe inside of it. So the dimension of the rotor is five inches. What we're going to do we're going to lay it we're making we're laying this out on the good side of it and we're laying this out five and a half inches because we're going to make this round obviously and I don't even have to tell you how I'm going to make it round so what I'm going to do the first step here is to go ahead and trim this off alright I done found the centers right quick what we're going to do with this same old thing you've seen me do a couple hundred times on some of the plastics but I think you even seen me do this on a square piece of steel. Is this is a I've I've got this a half inch bigger than what I really need it to be. Just because of, uh, that's what gave me a little room to get it down there, and uh, I just pick up. I just went out to the trailer. Of the truck and it, with the tape measure and just does a quick measurement on it. So, to do this, so I get an idea of what I need here. So, just a simple little half inch hole. We gotta go a lot bigger than a half. So. Nothing fancy. 
I do a little more layout work and uh, we'll get over to the bench. Here's why you have a junk park caliper. I said this ain't gonna be precise. All I'm doing is getting me an idea of what I want. And maybe I shouldn't scratch it like that. What I'm gonna do is just get an idea of kind of the radius I need and because like I say, remember this is a half inch bigger than what I need it to be. So what we're going to do is just kind of take a scale. This is not precision layout, but by no means. And we're just kind of getting an idea what to cut off. So that when we saw it, this way we won't be now I'm going to go back to the saw and I'm just going to saw these corners off, make it like a stop sign. It's a new day in the shop. There's a couple things I'm going to talk about while I'm working on this project. Uh, one, if you see little blue dots on my back, that's painter's tape to hold the cordless mic cord from getting in the way. And the other, if you'll notice on my workbench, this is one of the brake rotors. Uh, I don't know what this is off of. Practically, I don't really care. I know it's a bigger one. Uh, I just went to a local auto repair shop that I do business with, took the truck to be inspected, said I need a couple of brake rotors for a couple of projects. Uh, we done been colonoscopy today, so we're good to go. So that was yesterday when we got over it. So the first thing we need to do is determine how big this is I had that material cut at five and a half inches and according to the calipers it's about four inches seven hundred ninety thousandths and I've got a set of mics and a set of calipers so we're going to retire to the lathe. My whiteboard I have wrote the dimensions down this this stock was cut about five and a half inches to allow for us to have some room to work. So that's part of the plan. And it's like I said the other day, okay, if you had a fancy, 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 fancy plasma table, this wouldn't be no trouble. You just figure out the two circles and burn it out. <laughs> But I don't have no fancy plasma table, so therefore I'm just going to spin this. I don't know, that's going to be a little bit much for that size part. So I'm going to go a little small, lower. Most of my feeds and speeds are just by me. By, I'm going to use the word by guessing, by gosh. This is going to be a slow process. We're only going to take 20, 40 thousandths at a time. There's just not a lot of rigidity here. And we're just going to basically interrupt the cut. And we're just going to start at it. And I will bring you back along the way and uh, let you have a look see. you back for a couple of passes here. We, uh, we're only going about... We're only taking something like about 40 thousandths a side. You go much more than that, then it's going to spin on this little half inch bolt. Now the way I've got this one bolted is I got two, you'll notice I got like a half inch bolt in there that's been cut. You've seen me do that before. And the other thing that I'm doing with this is I've uh, used two flange nuts like you use to clamp on a mill. Like I said, if you had a plasma table, 
This is a lot of extra work, but since this is what I've got, this is what I am. Oh, while I'm at it, my apologies to Doug Lester over at Metal Works Machine. He says he doesn't like to do home projects because Mama will get him. Uh, this is a home project, but Mama really didn't bring it up. I don't like the looks of the plastic things, and I will make it once and done. So when I'm done, this is here last last rest of my life. Okay, according to my calculations, I've done about 18 thousandths. And uh, Michael just is texting me that's who the dinging is. So I'm going to take about 10. Like I say, this isn't the most sturdiest setup under the sun. We're going to take about 10. And like I say, I'm going to try to hit them in about 3,000. I want this just a little bit loose where it just sort of fits in there. And we're going to tack weld it and everything. So, so we were right on, believe it or not, we were right on five uh, basically four and a half inches and we like to be about four and you know so i've got about five thousandths here to play with so i'm gonna go about four to get what i'm allowing myself about a three thousandths tolerance for this i'm gonna back turn it and then re knock it Cause we're gonna. This is actually gonna be welded in the center of that rotor, so uh, we got other work to do to it. But this is getting it to be in what it needs to be. You know, basically round and square and around where it fit in there. Cause we all we need is a plate to fill the center of it up. And I want it to fit it exactly. So make sure you're on the high spot of this thing too, and that's. This something being this thin to mock it in the machine is a bit of a challenge. And by my calculations, I'm at 498. No, 490, yeah, uh, excuse me, 497, dead on it. I'm going to chat for this thing right quick, and we're going to take it over and see if it fits. If we're going to do any massaging, we can. And I'm going to roll in here and kind of knock these corners off get back here to do this and take it easy in here this is also going to be one of these will be a welding corner anyway Remember, we ain't holding this on a whole lot. Let's see if I got enough room to get over. My lathe is a little tight up at the top of the travel. I got the gib set a little tight, but that's fine. Usually I don't work up here. It ain't the best sounding stuff in the world, is it? Still got just the edge right there. We're going to take a file to it. Just to make it smooth. There's no edges to it. All right. We'll unchuck it and take it over to the bench here in just a second. Guys, let me double check and see if I'm in frame. Okay. I've got this taper shank drill here. We're just going to use it to punch a hole in it. This one probably needs it like it's only drilling on one side of it. This one looks like it needs a grind job big time. This drills, man. This is one of them I bought. Now, I didn't look at the point on this one. Now, I can already tell you, it, it's going to need some short, but it's going to need some work. But 
since I'm just willing to spend peace out today, and I'm just getting a rough hole in this, we'll just make do. These larger drills I have to hand sharpen because my drill sharpener won't take them. I just want to get a big enough hole I can bore with and that's all. So it doesn't really, you know, I just drill, I just now noticed that drill's got to have a little bit of TLC over here to drill sharp. We'll have to get a hole for it. Okay, we like about 40 thousandths or so. And I'm going to make this a slip fit, so it's got to be 1 inch 660, and we're at, uh, we're at 1 inch 640. I'm going to go, I might go a little more, because again, this is going to be a weldment, so we want that pipe to sort of slide a little bit. Uh, we don't get to the point now, I'm wanting to get backboard. There's other pieces I'm going to make for this project. I'm going to make a new darling bushing for the patio table too. But I want this done first. Weld it up and cleaned up where we can paint it and dry it and all that grand stuff that we want. So. We're at 6.50 now. I'm going for about 12, I'm going to go, I'm going to try to be about two over. Because I want this to pipe slide in there real easily, but still fit fairly tight. And if that works the way I want it to, we'll pull everything back and check it here on the lathe while you've got the camera running. That's right on 60, and I want that to be just a hair bigger. So, we're going to boil it one more time. Because I want this, this is just a, again, we're going to weld this piece of pipe to this. This is going to be the bushing that literally fits inside the wheel. It's got a little bit of a weld gap with it, 20 or so thousands or 30, so it could kind of hold. All right, let's, let's just crank this. See if we can just move all this stuff back, slide this pipe in here without having to crank that back because I want to go in there and do some back chamfers on it. See, this is just a piece I've cut. All I've done with this pipe is I've just sawed it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. It slips in there for a nice loose fit. That's what I needed. Okay, let me run back in there and chamfer the back side of it with this mowing bar, and then we'll flip the part around and chamfer it on this side. It's actually going to be welded on the side facing out, so. But this bowling bar is a DNMG type, and it can go in there and do a little bit of a chamfer. There we go. And I'll just take it loose and flip it around, and I'll. Whoops! Hit a bar and it startled me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Reached in there and, and touched it, and, and like the back of your fingernails were, the uh, back of your fingers where they're real sensitive. See, so, you now this, this is the side will be. I've got chamfers on both sides for welding. But see, this will only be welded here on one side, but I'm just going to get all the burrs out of it. And it's just easier to do it this way. This boring bar handles it real well. Now, 
we've got the, the plates and all the parts ready. I'm not putting screws in this because it's going to be tall enough time it's done. It's really going to support the umbrella. So uh, let me get some stuff together and we'll line all this up. Okay, I don't like to show much welding videos on my channel because I'm not a great welder. I got this gap a little wider than it needs to be too, so it's going to take a little bit of work. My old Daytona MIG is going to town. But we're going to get this welded up all the way around this rotor like this. And you can see kind of what it's going to look like. So uh, there you go. A little welding shot. Well, my welding job's not perfect. The grinder hides a lot of it. I'm going to take some sandpaper and scotch bright, run over this, and knock the rust off of it good, and try to get it primered and painted so we can put it on the porch. But basically, there, you know, I'm going to do that, and then we'll get back with you on it in a little bit. You know, it's just one of them things you got to do sometimes. Well, that's the completed unit. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a bit of a head cold today. It's the next day. We're going to go check it out and see if it'll work in a little bit. But this is a completed unit. I didn't show you all the painting and all that stuff, but you can kind of get a better view. But that's it, setting them outside vice. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this build. All right, there's the old sand fill one. Let me move over here. That's the old sand field unit that I got there. So that's what we replaced it with the one we made. That's the completed stuff. Uh, there's another video about making the bushing that goes on the top. And it is raining today. I apologize for the fact of that. But right there is our videos of what we've made up all this stuff. And uh, again, on this one here, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to really put this one in the bushing video. Or may you say that. So I hope you enjoyed today's videos. And I hope you enjoyed these two projects. This is Jim. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This is a copyright production of James Deadman, Sawlogs Plastic Hubs for your enjoyment on YouTube. Now, I would appreciate if you would click that subscribe button if you haven't already. It doesn't cost anything. There's no financial responsibility in your part. The other thing is, if you have friends that would enjoy these videos, hey, tell them about us. Tell them about the crazy old man out in the backyard in the shop. Uh, and tell them how much fun we have watching these videos. I sure would appreciate it. Till the next time, I will see you on our next video. Enjoy.